Welcome, and this is Shakti Corolla Neverin, and I'm a lover of gemstones. I've worked with them all my life as a jeweler and an astrologer. So kind of um, the result of that is uh, a book I wrote about it, how you can really find out about the astrological signature of a gemstone, because each stone has its own personality and its own different frequency aspects, depending on the color, the crystal structure, the hardness, and the chemical composition. So today I want to talk with you about the aquamarine, which is one of uh, the main gemstones for Aquarius, which means for Aquarian people it can balance and bring the Aquarian energies to, to the high road, to, to the highest expression possible. So whenever we work with gemstones, we bring in a very balanced, perfect field of the energy. So aquamarine is a stone who has uh, Mars energy, Mercury energy, Moon energy, and Uranus energy. So Uranus as the ruler of Aquarius here, we have the connection uh, to Uranus. So today I'm just going to present the uh, Aquarian material, but I want you to be aware that there are different Aquarian stones which might be better fitting for you. So for that we would have to know in which house your uh, Aquarian planet is and uh, how it's connected with other planets. So then we can get very specific and say this is your birth stone for your Sun, this is your love stone for your Venus and so on. So for that we uh, need to look into the whole birth chart and I have described that in my book but I also have created a program so you can just get a printout with your 14 main healing birth stones for all your planets in your charts. So if that's for, of any interest for you, you might want to check that out. And uh, now I want to take you over to my PowerPoint presentation. So uh, we talk about the aquamarine. Welcome over here. And today we're going to discuss uh, aquamarine and the light forces of gemstones in general. So uh, this is another one of my monthly True Birthstone uh, presentations and uh, I hope you will enjoy. When we're looking at the birthstone for Aquarius, we also look at the birthstone or monthstone for January uh, reaching over into February. And uh, as usual, it's really a journey I invite you to take into the mysterious world of healing gemstones. First, I want to discuss the concept of birthstones and uh, how that came to pass that uh, everybody knows their birthstone, like the jeweler community created very successfully. And then we will discuss uh, the aquamarine and the specifics and metaphysical healing quality of it. So what the jewelers did is they created another reason to identify with specific, specific gemstones to use in your jewelry. So just another way of identifying with a specific stone and saying, okay, this is my birthstone and so I want to wear that in a ring. But because jewelers are now astrologers, they, it's kind of a hit, hit and try. So some of them are okay, I would say, but others are not birthstones, I would suggest, for the different signs. So if you really want to find your true birthstone, you really need to look into your whole birth chart. You need to know not only in which sign the sun is, but also in which house and how it's connected with other planets. So and then you can find out your true birthstone. So as I said before, the aquamarine is one of the possible stones for you if your sun is in Aquarius. Uh, it might be a good stone for you uh, if your Venus is in Aquarius or your Ascendant or your Mars. So you really want to, to look at the bigger picture here. So the individual signature of aquamarine is described by Mars. Mercury, Moon and Uranus. And I'm going to walk you through uh, how that comes to pass and what it means for the specific qualities. 
uh, if you know about your birth chart, uh, if any of those planets in your chart need support, then the aquamarine would be the stone bringing at that perfect balanced light force, harmony, balance into that part of your chart, into that planetary energy. Talking about the metaphysical qualities of aquamarine, let's ta uh, start with the Mars aspect. And uh, aquamarine has Mars in its signature because it contains iron. So the pigment, pigment which gives it the, the blue color, the sky blue color, is actually iron. So uh, we all know this kind of lighter blue color like the, the sky uh, and the more expensive uh, stones can actually get quite blue like a deep ocean blue. And uh, there is a big, big quality and price difference from the light blue to the darker blue range. Aquamarine is a stone which is representing the throat chakra. And uh, so here we're getting the, the, the mercury quality. And aquamarine therefore helps to first sharpen our mind and our powers of discernment. And because it's also moon, which we come to later, it also helps us to tap into our individual unconscious mind, our creative inner sources, as well as a collective unconscious mind. So, uh, Relating to the throat chakra directly, aquamarine helps to, to open and balance the throat chakra where we all have blockages because growing up it's, uh, we, we learn that it's not always appropriate to speak our truths and we have been punished and put down for, for expressing ourselves. So we have to learn to, to find our, our voice, our personal truths. Uh, when it's appropriate to express our true feelings. So it's all about self-expression. So the aquamarine is a wonderful stone to help you to support that creative self-expression. Aquamarine also has a female aspect represented by the moon. So the moon symbolizes our heart, our soul, our inner world of emotions, our memories, our unconscious mind, all that. So uh, it reflects our emotional needs and wants and also our ability to give and to receive. So um, in the aquamarine, the, the moon quality is there to balance us, to feel full and nourished, so we are able to connect with our heart in a deeper way and connect to others in the world from that place. And then we have the Uranian, Aquarian qualities represented through aquamarine. So, um, as you know, Aquarius is the rebel, the, the one who dances outside the mainstream. So this is the gemstone of the visionary fighting for a better life, for goodness and for evolutionary changes. So um, it urges us to seek freedom and independence and express our uniqueness. So aquamarine is therefore the stone of the innovator, uh, the one who is ahead of, of her time in, in some ways. So it always encourages us to question our limiting beliefs, to, to be able to grow out of the box of um, our experience we have had so far and dare to move into our own dream, into our vision, into our future. And uh, so it's a stone which is uh, enhancing our, our courage. And then on top of all that, aquamarine 
uh, with his moon aspect really represents a quality which is often uh, represented by Mother Mary. So uh, when we you strip away the two thousands of male Christian tradition, uh, we discover that Mary was not only the mother of Christ, but a strong and highly evolved being in her own rights, and thus a role model for all of us today. So her strength also relates back to the tradition of the Black Madonna that is found all over the world. So the Black Madonna stands for the destructive and creative feminine principle of the universe and is called Shakti in the East Indian tradition. So in short, the metaphysical qualities of aquamarine, the healing powers help you to grow, to move beyond your imagined or real limitations. It will enhance your creativity. It will help you to, to express yourself and basically to become a strong woman. Or if you're a man, to find that inner strength, that inner female aspect inside of yourself. Because gemstones are uh, carrier frequencies and they pick up energies from handling along the way to, to end up with us, it's always important to do a little ritual of cleansing from those picked up energies so you really only have the energy of the stone you're working with. So I have done some other videos about cleansing. So basically you can do it with all the different uh, energies, water, fire, air, earth. And then the next step is that you program the gemstone of any kind you work with, with the added intention of what you want this stone to be for you and do for you. And from NLP and hypnotherapy, we know that anything can become an anchor for our conscious mind and unconscious mind. And gemstones are wonderful to use that way. So I have two other videos out there about cleansing and programming. So if you want a little bit more guidance uh, about that, uh, you can go and check it out. And then if you're a real gemstone lover, you might want to consider to get my astrological gemstone profile report where I put together for you your main 14 healing gemstones based on the planetary positions of all the different planets in your chart. So these are your main healing stones. These are the stones I would suggest you start with to get familiar with and, and play around with. And especially if you want to have jewelry, these would be the first one I would look for uh, in a selection. In my book, Jewelry and Gemstones for Self-Discovery, I teach you how to find your gemstones and you get all the description of uh, most of the stones ever used in jewelry. Uh, but the gemstone profile is a printout where I do it for you. And uh, it's for the 10 classical planets, your moon nodes, your ascendant and your Chiron. So if that's of interest for you, go check it out at uh, jewelryandgemsforselfdiscovery.com or at my uh, astrology page, maoiastrologyreading.com. Either way, you can find out more about it. If you haven't done so yet, please sign up for your subscription for my videos if this is of interest for you. Uh, you can also sign up for my newsletter uh, and there you will get a free report. Uh, so you can get a little taste about uh, what your true birthstone, love stone is for your Venus position in your natal chart and you get your, your, astro your astrological birth chart. So I hope you enjoy it. Like me if you do. And I hope to see you another time. And as we say here on Maui, Aloha.